All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just clip right here. It's like, like mini bolt cutters. Make sure you stay in the same straw. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take this off. It's called a truss rod. At night, when they go home, we're gonna put a chain and a padlock on this and then a close sign, close for business. Just kidding. So we're gonna cut the ties on this two and three eighths post. What we need to do is remove this post and put a two and seven eighths post here. So instead of this being a line post like it is now, we're gonna convert it to a gate post or a latch post. It needs to be four inches taller from this point up because we need to be able to terminate the top rail. I guess we do need to cut all the ties on the brace rail. Because we're gonna go ahead and just cut right here so that, that way we can lift this off of that cap. In order to make these things work, you gotta be able, you gotta put batteries. Oh, thank you. We did that so that we can lift the top rail off of that post. And then now we can actually get down there, pull the anchors out and slap a new post in. Okay, so that's the one that we took out. And this is the one that we're gonna put in. It's a lot bigger. It's still a 40 weight post, but with a gate, you wanna go with a bigger post. The flighting on this bit matches the thread pattern on this concrete anchor. And that is another reason that these concrete anchors are so cool because if you were to take something out, like we just did, you're just left with the hole. You don't have to worry about that stud being there. You don't have to drive the stud into the concrete and then fill it back. You can just pull this out and then patch it right back. Super easy to deal with for those that can't make up their mind, like us. Just in case anybody was curious, this concrete anchor has been in this piece of concrete for about two years and it still is galvanized. No wear, no rust. Just in case you're wondering what they look like after being exposed to the elements, do they weaken, do they rust? Nope, still good as new. That's why we're gonna reuse it. Uh-oh. So I rotated my post a few times and I was hoping that my holes were gonna line up. They're so darn close. I mean, they're really close, but they're not close enough. These two holes are too far that way. So the plate's covering them and I cannot redrill them and have that anchor work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to shift the post one way or the other. That's how we're gonna overcome this problem. I'm gonna come this way. I'm gonna throw those two away. So we'll fill them up later and recover them, patch them up, make them look nice. We're gonna use these two holes and then drill two new holes. Make sure that you leave nothing on top of that concrete, such as any dust or piles of dust, because you wanna make sure that you have direct contact between the top of the concrete and the bottom of that base plate. What can happen over time if you don't do that is that post can become loose and start doing the wobble. Doing the, I think there's a song like that. Do the wobble, baby, do the wobble, baby. Something like that, I don't, I don't know. When shimming out a post, I like to use composite shims, but definitely do not use a wood shim. What's gonna happen is it's gonna break down over time and you're gonna create that gap between the bottom of your post. 
the underside of your plate and the top of your concrete, and you're eventually gonna have a loose post. We got one done, one more to go. So we have 43 and a half inches there. We're also going to measure the bottom side of the gate. We still have the same. I just like to double check my gates to make sure that they're straight and true all the way down. So we got 43 and a half that the gate takes up. Our hinges is gonna take up two and our fork latch is gonna take up another two. That is two inches. Just go ahead and make sure that we have the same manufacturer of hinge, which we do. And that is two inches. Here's the fork latch that they have given us. Oh, two and three eighths. I said it was a two inch latch, see? That's a good thing I measured that. So we're gonna plan on a two and a half inch gap there. You gotta always measure that gate hardware. 43 and a half plus four and a half, which is going to give us 48 inches. So we could be anywhere from 48 to 48 and a quarter, 48 to 48 and a half. 48, that half inch would give us a gap and that'd be just fine. Ironically, right where I have it put is right where it needs to be. It could go in just a little bit. I said just a little bit, Dan. Ah. I have two different size impacts right here. I have a quarter inch and I got a half inch. The half inch is obviously more power. Yeah, more power. Well, we don't wanna start with more power right away. What I like to do is I like to start with the quarter inch because if you start with the half inch and it goes crooked just a little bit on you, you can actually chip out that concrete pretty bad. So I don't like to go to the, the half inch impact until I get some nice embedment there. Solid, very solid. As I was told never to run with knives. Okay, so now, now we have one post and two posts, both our posts in. One good thing to check if you're gonna do something like this, make sure you can't move them. If they're nice and solid, rigid, you may continue to the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to the next step. We have a rule of thumb when we're working on top of concrete, and that is always add one inch. Standard grade mark for us is 69 inches when working with a six foot fence. So we're gonna add that inch. Now our grade mark is gonna be 70. So we're gonna put our grade mark at 70. That's where our top rail is gonna go, the bottom of the top rail. 74 is now gonna be our cut mark. Okay. We have one brace band on for our tension wire. We have one brace band on and a single hole rail end for our brace rail. We're gonna put the last one on for our top rail. Now our post is too tall and we know that. So what do we gotta do? So we're gonna go ahead and just transfer that mark so we don't have to measure. So we're gonna put a mark right at the very end of that rail end. That would be the top of the line post. What happens to the top rail? The top rail sits on top of the line post. So this mark needs to match up with the bottom side of that top rail. Since we have a fixed rail end over there, we're just gonna measure from inside of rail end to inside of rail end. So this mark, you want to go into the middle of the middle rail. So if you go just like that, when the rail end is going up, 
This is now landing in the middle of the middle rail. And now we're going to do the exact same thing on that side of the fence. Have you ever met Miss Lindy? She's a gal with the bright red hair. Now she stands high from all the rest. You know her anywhere. Where well, she's mine. Yeah, she's mine. Well, I love so now we're going to go ahead and tighten our tension wire. What we call this is we call this our T-handle. I'm turning it for this side counter or clockwise, which is putting a bind on itself. I'm going to unroll it nice and tight and then wrap it back around itself. This is not the uh, traditional 7 gauge coil spring tension wire. This is just a 12 and a half gauge two stranded tension wire, which is what we will run on our residential chain link. Just what so happened to be here. And that's how you do that. If you're looking for one of these, see the link below. All right, now we finally get to put the chain link up. Woo! Yay! So what this is gonna do is this is going to hold our chain link up for us. If you're gonna use this in the field, the proper application of using this tool is right next to the line post. Because that is the strongest point right there. If you're gonna use this in the center of the top rail to lift the chain link here, for this post so you can tie it, you're gonna do nothing but bend this top rail down by the time it lifts the chain link and gravity works its course. The strongest point to use this is right next to the post. Using this on a termination, we're going to use it right as close to the we can to the termination point. So if I go right here, what'll happen is the top rail dresser will slide into the inch and five eighths rail end, allowing us not to be able to stretch the chain link. So that's too close. So we want to take the top rail dresser back one more diamond, which is going to hold our chain link right there. So I cut it there and I'm going to take out this straw all the way down. Now we'll take our tension bar. We're going to slide it into there. Because this is such a short section, because this is such a short, I don't know why I can't go from one to the other. Because this is such a short section of chain link, we're gonna go ahead and use a two and seven eighths bear hold on this. You can use a pull jack as well. So we'll put one there, one there, then they lock into place. So now I can go ahead and put on my tension bands. These are really ideal for doing small runs of chain link. Fab uh, fabricating is killing me today. Speech, speech is killing me. They're really great for fabricating gates and also interior cages or short runs of chain link. These bear holds don't just come in two and seven eighths. They come in inch and three eighths, inch and five eighths, inch and seven eighths, two and three eighths, two and seven eighths, and four inch. And that's the luxury of using the bear holds, and we're gonna try and use them again on this side too. The truss rod. So we're not gonna put this back in. What? The reason that we're not gonna put it back in is because this is a single section. So these two posts are pulling to each other. Uh, there is no need for a truss rod here. And now we're gonna go ahead to hog ring, hog ring pliers, and nine gauge hog rings. We put these every nine diamonds right there. If you're looking for a pair of hog ring pliers, make sure and see the link below. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and put our ties on. And if you guys don't know anything about these, which I'm sure most of you do, here's the tie and that is the tool to tie it. 
So your spacing is gonna match your hog rings. Pinch the tie, insert the tool until it goes all the way in. Pull the trigger and then twist it until it falls, up, falls back out. Hand tying ties, it can stay in the past because it sucked. There's such a better way of tying ties. And if you are still hand tying ties, these are gonna save you so much time. Let's see here. Now it's time to hang the gate. The gate's gonna hang off of this side because this is the side that our collars are on. Why they're so important? Can't you just let the hinge rest on the tension band? That bulldog hinge, after opening several times, will actually start cutting through that tension band. And when it gets cut all the way through, it's gonna, the gate's gonna fall. I'm gonna take a measurement from the bottom collar to the middle of that top rail, and I got 55 inches. And I'm measuring that so that I know where to put my bottom hinge at. So I'm gonna measure from the middle of this top brace band that is holding the inch and five eighths top rail. We're gonna go down 55 and a half inches and put a mark. So we're gonna take the U-bolt and the main frame of the hinge. And this is where that collar is gonna sit. So we're gonna go just a hair above that line. So if anything, we wanna be able to smack this hinge down if it's too high and not have to lift it up. Our gate frame is an inch and seven eighths, so we're gonna figure out which way we have to have this flipped, which goes that way, and we're gonna slide that now on the gate frame. We're gonna grab the second hinge, take the nuts off the U-bolt. Now we broke apart that other hinge, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna pre-assemble this part on the walk gate. Make sure that always going to the secure side. So they're going to the inside of the fence. Bolt heads to the unsecure side, nuts to the secure side. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lift this gate. I'm gonna take this collar and lift on top of that bulldog hinge. I'm gonna lift that other piece of the hinge up and then stuff the bolts through. We're just gonna check our height and make sure that our top rails flow continuously. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it, everything is all in the center line of each other. Make sure you can see the same amount of post at the top of the gate as you can the bottom. One way to tell that is snug it down, open your gate just a little bit, and look to make sure you can see the same amount of post on each side. Put a little bit of a gap between that top hinge and that top collar to make sure that everything swings nice and freely. The way that we have the hinges set up, we have the bottom one underneath the collar and the top one above the collar. And the reason that we do that and not the other way around, the reason we don't go bottom and bottom is if you did that, we could then lift that gate up. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Did we screw it up? And I guess I say we because you watched me and let me do all this. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna fit? Moment of truth, here we go. Yay! We have just that half inch there that we went wide at the very beginning because we needed 48 inches and we went 48 and a half. Perfect. It's definitely better to give yourself just a little bit more room than not enough. Everything always gets a cap. There's one more step. Oh man, I never said anything about my shirt. I'm wearing a shirt. Hey, if you guys are looking for some nice, classy YouTube merch from SWI, make sure and see the link below. If you guys are wanting to check, uh, watch, make sure and click on the, check the link, there's no link. Make sure and click right here to check out the whole commercial chain link series. What a job well done. I'm Dan with SWI.
Don't forget, we are Wyoming's Fence Company and you have a good dang day.